Hey everyone, and welcome back again for another five minute tech talk. I'm Luke Woodward, a senior developer on the Nexus Managed Apps Products team. Uh, and today we are once again, continuing our exploration of the Git version control system using GitHub and our Nexus Managed WordPress platform. Uh, this is part three. So if you haven't seen parts one or two, you may wanna pause this video and go back and watch those first, but let's get going. So far uh, we have our server. Uh, and we have our GitHub repository. Uh, now it's time to start using the repository to set up multiple installations. Uh, so let's take a look at what it might look like to connect our repository to another Nexus installation uh, that I have created. Uh, this could be a staging site, it could be a local installation, uh, or if you're using this repository as something like a starter template, this could be part of your initial setup flow uh, for setting up a new site uh, that you are creating. Uh, so let's uh, see what that looks like. Uh, so the first thing we need is a second installation, which I've gone ahead and created a new Nexus Managed WordPress site here. Uh, and I'm gonna go ahead and copy these credentials and we're going to move over here and create a new tab where we're going to shell into that server. Uh, so once we get in, uh, we're gonna see coming over here to the public HTML directory, Let's take a look at the file. And here is our basic WordPress installation. Uh, something to note is we do not have a .get folder here, uh, indicating that this particular inst installation does not have any Git version control system in it yet. So what we're gonna do now is we're going to hook this new installation up with our Git repo that we have hosted in GitHub. Uh, to do that, instead of the init flow that we used the first time, we're actually going to clone this repository, uh, which is just slightly different. Uh, and we'll talk about what that means. Uh, so coming back over here, we are going to git clone. We're gonna give it that HTTPS address for our Git repo over on GitHub. Uh, it is going to start cloning that and give it our credentials. So we will start cloning that. To do that, we'll come over here and grab the HTTPS address. We'll say git clone and give it that URL to the GitHub repository. And we will give it our credentials. Uh, and now if we run that list command again, uh, we're actually going to see, I don't see a git folder here, but I do see a git demo folder. Uh, because this uh, installation already has some files, uh, we can't actually just clone this repo into this directory. So we have to do a little bit of extra work because these files already exist, but it's not too hard. Uh, if uh, you know how to go about doing it. Uh, so what we've done is we've actually cloned our repo into this folder called git demo here. And now what we need to do is actually move that git folder into the root here. So to do that, we're going to say move uh, git demo slash dot git. And that's that special git folder that holds all of our code. And we're gonna move that here where we are. Uh, and then just to clean up, we will remove the git demo folder that we had created. So now if we do our listing out, rather than that git demo folder, we actually have our dot git folder, uh, which is going to be all of the repository changes that we have. Finally, last thing to do to hook this repository up to this installation is to do a reset, which is basically telling git, hey, I want the code that I have here to look exactly like what I have in the head of my repository, the head being the last commit uh, that you have made. Uh, so we'll go ahead and do that. And now one more time, if we do LAH, take a look, we have our git ignore file uh, and we have the readme file from the repository. And if I actually look at this installation itself, so here I am over at the dashboard and then come over here to plugins. Uh, I can actually see, I have the classic editor plugin too, which remember is the one that we added last time uh, to our repository. So coming over here to plugins, I had the classic editor, which I add. And now that I've reset my repository and uh, hooked it up with this installation, I have my classic editor here as well. Uh, so we are now uh, all set to 
add and remove plugins from this install as well. And now we have two installations that can both connect back to that Git repository on GitHub, uh, and we can manage the code in both of them in that one singular place. Uh, and that's incredibly useful, especially as you are doing things such as spinning up staging sites, uh, or like I said, if you're using this as a template install. So let's do a quick review. Uh, we created a new WordPress installation. Uh, we took that installation, got logged into the server, and hooked up our code using the clone. Uh, that does differ from init because we didn't have to set up any of the remote uh, connections like we did the first time around, because when you use clone, it actually pulls in all of that remote information as part of the clone operation. Uh, and then finally, we went ahead and uh, reset our repository back to the head of our code from the repo, uh, which synced up all of those files. And now we are ready to use this repository with our second installation. If you've come this far, you are well on your way to learning how to effectively use Git to control the source code in your and all of your source files. Uh, this is going to conclude our series on basic Git, but don't forget to check out all of our other five minute tech talks for more topics. Uh, and of course, if you have more questions or you want to learn more about our products and services, you can always find us over at nexus.net. Thanks very much for